Ah, Borg. Well, well, would you look at that? It's a Ferengi lockbox. Exactly what I want after, well, pulverizing a bunch of Borg and putting them all over the floor. Not. Well, it's another episode of MML Anthropology, and welcome back into Star Trek Online. And I must say, I keep coming back to this game because not only is it one of the most interesting uh, it phenomena involving the transition of pay-to-play to free-to-play, to free hello Deep Space K7, but it's also been a source of a certain amount of drama and interesting effects. Uh, one of them that I'm bringing up today is the use of drop boxes in the in-game economy, and I mean lock boxes, not drop boxes. These are essentially a uh, in-game treasure box that can only be unlocked by purchasing microtransaction currency from the C store right here, and you have to buy a key. That would be one of those, except for only one rather than ten. Uh, each key costs about 100 C points, which if you looked at my previous video about the Dilithium Exchange and the C point system, uh, right now C points can be bought uh, for money or they can be traded for Dilithium for about 300 to 306 Dilithium per. And given that you can refine about 8,000 dilithium a day, that means that it would take you about four days of constant grinding in order to get enough C points to buy a unlocker for a lockbox. Well, I'm going to go to the station, which is in the Drazana system, where these lockboxes, uh, they have another currency, I should point out, a whole nother one, not just energy credits, dilithium, and C points, but Ferengi Lobi crystals, which pop out of these lockboxes and other things that add another uh, element of uh, items to the game. So I'm going to jump into there and speak about what can be bought with those, the controversy about the lockboxes, and uh, some of the drama that's arisen around them. So let's go on in. Now, where are they hiding at? Oh, there he is. Okay, Lobby Crystal Vendor. Let's hop up here, shall we? Or not. So I'm going to stand near him, but not next to him, so that that obnoxious little thing doesn't pop up. But basically, you saw one before. Uh, you saw me pick one up. This is a Ferengi lockbox. The previous lockboxes, which came out, were Cardassian lockboxes. And in them contained, uh, at a very rare rate, a uh, Cardassian Galar cruiser. A beautiful ship with weird equipment on it. This one, I believe, contains a Ferengi Decora Marauder, some sort of uh, cross between a science ship and an escort with missiles and all sorts of other random things. Uh, however, as with every lockbox dropped, you must use that 100 C points key in order to unlock it, which has caused a bit of a stir because these drop lockboxes, I keep calling them drop boxes, these lockboxes fall out during uh, general play, and they become a part of the loot that you pick up, and they're not really interesting or fun because you need to pay money, or at least you need to grind dilithium in order to buy them and actually unlock them, and the chances are that nothing good is going to fall out of them. Uh, in fact, all too often, uncommon or, or even not even rare items p pop out of them. And in fact, it's absurdly rare to run into one of these battleships that everyone is looking for. And if you were willing to uh, save up a ridiculous amount of energy credits, you could probably go buy one from the auction house. The other thing that comes out are these, Lobby Crystals, which are another part of the economy of the game. In fact, they're a whole nother uh, type of currency. We have a number of currencies right now. We have the topmost currency, the C-point, which you can buy for money. Then you have Dilithium. 
then underneath that you have energy credits. Now, I've described some of these in a previous video, my dilithium exchange video, and I also described some of the things that we could expect to see coming out of Star Trek Online when they switched to free-to-play. And one of the things that I thought we could expect more of was more stuff showing up in the sea store, i.e., you know, uh, stuff that can be bought for money. Services, ships, items, uh, uh, aesthetic looks on your character, and that sort of thing. But I didn't quite expect... Uh, these grab bag boxes, or even the lobby crystals. Let me show you what's interesting about lobby crystals, and also describe what one of the problems is. Lobby crystals enable you to purchase a number of interesting things, like for example these I think are only for the Decora Marauder. Uh, like, um, yeah, Maybe maybe you can install them on other ships, but these are definitely most interesting on the Decora Marauder. Then you've got a couple outfits and things that change the look of your character. But everyone's favorite is this one, the 15 Lobby Crystal uh, item called the Ferengi Energy Whip, which basically is a, uh, a weapon that blasts people. We, I think, believe that we saw them early on in the original series when we first met the, excuse me, in the next generation when we first met the Ferengi and they were throwing the whips at people, or at least zap, you know, blasting Riker and etc. Now, one of the things that people have discovered early on with the Ferengi lockboxes was that some of them contained an absurd, absurd amount of Lobi crystals and other ones contained a very, very small amount. Um, I don't really know because I haven't bought into these things because I'm not really that interested, but it adds a whole nother set of currency that only come out of the lock boxes. You can't trade these. As you can see, we've got Lobi crystals and they're bound. That's what that Lobi crystal common inventory bound means, that I can't sell it to another player or put it on the exchange or trade it. I can only get it by using a hundred C points, which are a money currency on the microtransactions, or by pulling them out of the dilithium exchange. One of the things that this has caused uh, many of the community to come up with is that they're kind of becoming annoyed and infuriated that they're locked out of a, l a large portion of the content if they don't want to buy into the C store or the dilithium market. Fortunately, the fact that you can get uh, C points from the dilithium market means that you don't need to spend money, you just need to grind more in the game. And a lot of MMO games that we know of, including, you know, the most popular and everyone's favorite World of Warcraft, involved a ridiculous amount of grinding for various different types of items, including late game stuff and etc. The problem with the lockboxes is that there's this sense that you're spending something other than your time and energy and group effort in uh, you know, running around in a dungeon or in this case an elite strike force uh, and instead you're gambling away something that you built up rather than uh, partaking of the loot that fell off of a group of enemies say this has also generated a little bit of drama because there's been a certain amount of, of fury at the devs, or at cryptic at least, on the forums, because they're bowing to this desire of Perfect World Entertainment, who bought Star Trek Online, to make money via things like lockboxes. And it looks to me, and to everyone else, that lockboxes are probably not going anywhere anytime soon, because they are ridiculously popular with people that want to buy them. People want to get their hands on these interesting ships. The Cardassian Galar Cruiser and the, the Ferengi Decora Marauder. They are um, they're intriguing. They're different. They're, they, you, you have to work ridiculously hard in order to get them. And people also want, like I said, the Ferengi Whip. Fortunately, you can also get Lobby Crystals from the, the current reruns that, they, that Cryptic is doing of older content. Um, older content being previous episodes are currently in rerun. The one right now is the Brain series. And in every rerun, there is a 
place where you might find an interactive console or an interactive box or something, and in that box you'll find a couple Lobi crystals. Since the Ferengi Whip is only 15 crystals, and, well, I think these two I got from my initial box, maybe that means that I haven't found, you know, any laying around, that means that uh, probably you get two, three, four from every episode, so you run five episodes and you find every single uh, panel or whatever, you might have enough. Oh, hello, person. Meanwhile, that's all I have to say. Sure, why not? That's all I have to say about the lockboxes at the moment and some of the drama has, has arisen. Uh, but I'm wondering what you guys think about the lockboxes. Do you feel that it's separating content from the game? Do you expect to see more? I certainly expect to see more because people are buying into them a ridiculous amount. And it's actually making Cryptic, or excuse me, at least Perfect World Entertainment and Cryptic by proxy through them a great deal of money. Even if people are not very happy with the outcome of having to worry about what feels like uh, gambling with the time and uh, dilithium and potentially you know paying out a, a dollar or so in order to buy one of these keys to unlock one of these boxes and probably get m substandard merchandise you know 99 times out of 100 but I'm uh, asking you guys I'd like to know what you think about the lock boxes if you bought one if you've keyed one if you uh, uh, are looking forward to getting a Marauder if you have a Cardassian Galar. Meanwhile, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think. And this has been another MMO Anthropology. Good night and good dreams. This has been another episode of MMO Anthropology as I fly through the uh, Borg-infested Gamma Orionis sector. If you like what you've seen, give us a thumbs up and comment if you have something to say. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of this, or uh, the Borg will assimilate your children.